Well, hello, church. This is Pastor David, and I hope you're having a blessed day. As you know, we are going through these devotionals based on the current sermon series. Pastor Guy started the, the year with the theme of Reset, and now we're looking at the book of Philippians as well uh, to speak into our lives in these times. And uh, last uh, Sunday, uh, Pastor Guy preached from Philippians chapter 1, verse 12 to 18. And as we go through this passage of Scripture, we find very important things for our lives. I believe that the Lord wants to speak to us as well in two areas this morning. So I want to share with you a couple thoughts regarding that. And we read in verse 12 of Philippians chapter 1. Now I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel. So Paul gives us here an example of what to live for. His aim, his desire, his focus is so that through his life, the gospel would advance. He desires that through any circumstance that he is facing, that the progress of the gospel would move forward, that there would be something related to the kingdom of God that would move forward. So the question for us is, what are we living for? What are we aiming for in our lives? You know, every year we have goals, and it seems that um, it is a tradition, right, to have goals at the beginning of the year, whether, whether it's health-related, um, wellness, fitness, uh, maybe education, maybe uh, reading books. All of us have different goals for the year, and sometimes it's hard to keep them. Sometimes we can uh, achieve all those goals. But here Paul says, hey, I have a goal in mind for my life, a vision for my life. I want that in any circumstance, the gospel would advance. Any circumstance. So because Paul's aim is for the gospel, it doesn't matter whether he is free in the streets preaching or visiting house churches or he is in prison. The circumstance does not limit his goal. His surroundings does not limit the vision that he has for his life. And sometimes we can look at our lives. If my goal in life is for the gospel to move forward, then no circumstance that I face will be an obstacle. But if my goal then is um, personal achievement, if my goal is safety, if my goal is prosperity, if my goal is my success, then I believe that things that we face could um, be a hindrance to those goals. We see even now with COVID-19, uh, if we were looking at a, um, a goal in relation to education, uh, you cannot go in person, it has to be online. Finances, uh, the stock market can go up and down regarding, uh, depending on the day. So circumstances uh, can uh, be a difficult um, obstacle if our goal is on this earth for success, for making a name, for achievement, for um, safety. So the question, what are we living for? What is my goal in life? So Paul again gives us an example that we should aim uh, to live for the progress of the gospel, that we would that we would see our lives as uh, ones who can be uh, for one thing, living for one thing, to make the name of Jesus great and for the kingdom of God to move forward. And number two in verse 14, it says that most of the brethren trusting in the Lord because of my imprisonment have far more courage to speak the word of God without fear. That's amazing. The fact that Paul, being in prison, he was able to impact others so that they 
could also speak the word of God with courage, without fear. Do you know that you can influence others? Actually, all of us are influencing people right now. We are impacting people right now for good, for bad, or for nothing. What I mean is that we can impact people so that they can see their callings as well in life to be for the sake of the gospel. We can influence and impact people so that they would see God in a fresh, clear way and move forward with the same passion that we have. Or we can impact people uh, to continue living in fear, to continue living in anxiety, to continue living for something less than the greatness of the kingdom of God. You know, uh, all around us, there are so many voices that want to influence our thinking, our behavior, our thoughts, our relationships. Uh, but through the word of God and through the spirit of God, we can have a, a solid ground and a solid roadmap uh, on how to live our lives and how we can influence others for the sake of the gospel. So you are impacting people. We are impacting people right now. Uh, so the question is, how, how are we impacting or imparting into others? What are we imparting into others? Paul, even in prison, he was imparting peace and hope. He was imparting uh, uh, a desire and eagerness, eagerness for the sake of the gospel. He was imparting passion for Jesus. He was imparting uh, hope of the kingdom of God. So we can also impact others. We can impart into others courage, hope, love, peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Or we can impart fear. Um, we can impart anxiety. We can impart um, division. We can impart... Um, uh, lack of love and lack of unity. So, as we see in this passage of Scripture in, in Philippians 1, we are reminded that even in difficult circumstances, Paul was aiming to make his life goal that the gospel would advance. So may we also understand that there is one thing worth living for, one thing worth living for and is for Jesus to be exalted in my life and through my life all around the world starting right here wherever we are it doesn't matter our circumstances if our life goal if our vision for life is that Jesus be glorified it doesn't matter if we are in a great season of prosperity or in a season of difficulty whether we are in prison or not if our life goal, if our vision for life is that Jesus be exalted and the gospel advance, then nothing will be an obstacle for that. And second, because of that life goal, we can impact others and we can impart into others that same passion and vision and clarity for true life, life with Jesus. So may we be vehicles that impart peace and hope and courage for the kingdom of God, for, for the things of God, instead of being influencing, in, instead of impacting or influencing people in the areas of fear and anxiety and division. Because we are instruments in God's hands and we can, by the Spirit of God, make a difference in others. Again, for the sake of the gospel. So I give you uh, these thoughts and uh, let's pray and let's continue on with our day. Father, we love you and we thank you uh, that your kingdom knows no end, that the gates of hell will not prevail against your church. And Lord, you have given us this treasure, this gospel, the good news of Jesus that can transform any situation. And God, there are so many things that the world tells us 
tell us to live for. So many different visions for life. But God, when we behold you and when we see you and when we know we have been embraced by you, God, then there is one thing worth living for, only one thing, one goal in life. And let it be to live for your glory so that the good news of Jesus, the gospel, uh, be spread around the earth. And God, help us to understand that we are impacting others, even now, even today, with our words, with our um, thoughts, with our behavior, we are impacting others. So we ask that you give us grace so that we will impact others in the things of the kingdom of God, that we would impart courage, that with our life we would see fear go away, that we would see fear retreat and courage move forward for the sake of the gospel. Lord, uh, we just give you our lives. We ask that you would have your way in us, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, Mountain View, have a great rest of the day, and we'll see you sometime again. God bless.